Hi, this is Trudy with Howard Tax Prep LLC, and I wanted to go over in detail exactly how you document the, that your corporation, whether it be a S Corp or a C Corp, is renting from you as an individual for up to 14 days. So again, if your S Corp is paying you rent, to host business meetings in order to make sure that you document properly in the event that you're audited by the IRS, the first thing you need to do is research the rates in your area for conference room or meeting room rentals. You can look on peerspace.com, which I'll show you how to do near the end of the video, or you can call hotels in your area or the area that you would like to have the meeting in and have them email you a quote uh, for four hours and for eight hours. The second thing you want to do is create an invoice for your corporation for the conference or meeting room rental. So if I, Trudy Howard, wanted to invoice or have Howard Tax Prep LLC pay Trudy for using my home to conduct business meetings, then I, Trudy, would invoice Howard Tax Prep LLC. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy or spectacular. We do actually have rental agreements. If you wanted to purchase one from us, you could purchase a rental agreement. And uh, that way you'll make sure that you have everything you need in the event you are audited. Because remember with the IRS, everything is about documentation and what you can prove. So the IRS doesn't believe anything that you say. They want to see something in writing. The third thing that you want to do is create a conference meeting room rental agreement, or like I said, you can order one from Howard Tax Prep LLC. The fourth thing you want to do is write a check, or you could do a Zelle payment, Cash App, Apple Pay, et cetera, from your corporate bank account to your personal bank account. Because if you never send the money from the corporation, to you, the individual, then your invoice and your rental agreement is invalid because you never made the payment. So you have to show the payment being made in order for the corporation to take the tax deduction. And then the fifth thing you want to do is make sure that you document the business purpose of the meeting. And you can do this through meeting minutes or even simply through your resolutions for your business. So I wanted to give you 12 meeting ideas. So you, the very first one is the annual meeting minutes. So every corporation needs to have an annual meeting. In the annual meeting, you're just um, going over, you know, what kind of has happened throughout the year, any changes, uh, where you guys plan on going, your mission statement, et cetera. Then you want to talk about the next quarter's sales goal. So that's another meeting. So if you're in a service industry and now you want to bring in three more new customers or four more customers, and that's going to bring you in an additional $2,500 in revenue, you want to set your sales goals. Your third meeting could be process updates. Uh, I know that I've had many processes that I've had to update. And this could be as simple as how you're going to receive orders. Some people receive orders through their text messaging on their phone. Some people email. And then some people like me, you stop text messaging and you're like, hey, everybody needs to send an email. You need to upload documents to your portal. So that is always a meeting that's good to have for your business is updating processes and your systems. You want to review your fourth meeting. You can design um, your branding. You can go over that. Branding is really big now. It's a major part of your marketing, but you can do that. Uh, your annual budget meeting, especially at the end of the year, you can have this meeting because you need to know, well, how much did we pay for utilities? Did we have to get any continuing education? Did we have to buy any licenses? You know, et cetera. So make sure that you do your annual budget meeting. 
your board of directors decisions. This was really popular uh, when the SBA loans were out, the EIDLs and the PPP loans. So even if you are the only director on the board, uh, you still want to document any decisions. So with the SBA loans, oftentimes you were documenting those decisions with a resolution. So you know, the board resolves that we will take on $10,000 in debt from the SBA. Then you will have a meeting about your recent accomplishments. So if you are in real estate and you sold a property, great. How long did it take me to close this property? Uh, were we able to cut back on our costs that we had allotted or that we had budgeted? Industry news. Industry news is important because you want to know what's going on in your industry. So again, I deal with a lot of real estate uh, investors and real estate agents, but that's a something that you always want to keep abreast of is what's going on in your industry. In the tax industry, there's so much going on. I, I never run out of things to research. Um, you always look at Congress, see what's going on because Congress affects all of our industries. So you want to use that meeting to, like I said, stay abreast of what's going on in your industry. If you've had any customer or client feedback, so are you getting reviews? Um, if you're fixing and flipping homes, are you following up with your people who purchased the home from the real estate agent and asking, you know, hey, how is the home? How do you feel safe in this neighborhood? Um, let's say the last few homes you flip, the people are loving the neighborhood, crime is low. Well, hey, that's great for you. That's even more marketing. We fix and flip in areas where you can feel safe, you know, and then that flows into having a meeting for your marketing plan. So are you going to go after a particular zip code after a certain demographic? Are we looking for women, uh, women ages 20 through 30 or 35 through 50. Do they need to have a certain income, right? So you want to make sure that one of your meetings helps you to finalize whatever your marketing plan is. And then you want to have a review of your compliance records. So has your state of Illinois, the secretary of state, because everyone's not in Illinois, but has the secretary of state uh, annual report, has that been filed? Annual reports are different from your annual meetings, OK, so your annual report lets the state know that you are still in their state doing business and it gives them the address that you can be contacted at or your registered agent should there be uh, a reason that someone needs to contact you. And then we have our annual financial performance review, and that would be your 12th meeting. And these meetings don't have to be by month. Right now, we're at the end of December. A lot of people need to get in their meetings. So you could do them over a 12-day period. Or if you need to condense, you need to do two meetings per day. So you're having eight-hour meetings. You can definitely do that. But I just wanted to give you some ideas of meetings that you could have that actually serve a valid business purpose so that your S-Corp can pay you rather than having a meeting downtown or trying to go into a coffee shop to get some silence or what have you, you can pay yourself as an individual to rent out, you know, a room, your basement, what have you, just a dedicated area. Now you as an individual will not have to claim the income as long as it's 14 days, it was really 15 days or less. So that's why we always say 14 days, but that rental income is tax free to you as an individual. So we're taking a tax deduction from our corporation. The corporation gets to write this off and I as an individual get to get tax free income, which is way better than a tax deduction. Okay. But some things I want to make sure that you're aware of are there's some doctrines called a sham transaction uh, with the IRS where they can say, well, we're not going to allow this biz, uh, this benefit or, or this tax deduction because we think it's a sham. And in order to treat a transaction as a sham, the court has to find that the taxpayer 
was motivated by no business purposes other than obtaining tax benefits and entering the transaction. And also that the transaction has no economic substance because no reasonable possibility of a profit exists. So let's say I set up a LLC. Um, I saw something on TikTok and they said, if you set up an LLC, I can write off my phone, my business can rent for me, et cetera. But I only made $1 in sales, right? Um, that the IRS could easily say, well, that's a sham transaction. If you only made $1 in sales, why would you pay $12,000 in rent to have meetings for a business that's not generating any revenue whatsoever? So you would be hard pressed to prove that this was a legitimate business expense. So you just want to make sure that you are bringing in income and you're not just making up things to try to get a tax deduction to lower the income from your W-2 job, but that you actually are using a tax law to your benefit to lower your taxable income from the business through valid business deductions. And then you have to make sure that your deduction has a business purpose. And so the business purpose doctrine, that is a subjective inquiry into the motives of the taxpayer. Simply put, it's whether the taxpayer intended the transaction to serve some useful non-tax purpose. So we'll go back, I set up an LLC and I say I'm doing uh, Trudy Consulting. And the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can write off my cell phone. I didn't have any legitimate business purpose. I wasn't trying to generate a profit because you don't have to have a profit in order to have a business, but you have to have the intention that you were going to generate a profit. And that's a much longer video that I'll go through uh, at a later time. But the basics of, um, or the basis of what you all need to do now, if you have an escort, if you have an escort, we didn't set one up for you unless you have a net income of thirty-five to forty thousand dollars anyway. So you've already proven a business purpose. Uh, we just want to make sure that we solidify our business purpose by having these annual meetings and taking minutes for our meetings, making notes. Um, you can even email yourself. Okay, so for the next quarter's sales goals, that meeting was held on December 19th. You shoot yourself an email, you know, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Sales goals are uh, to increase revenues by 20%. So now we have something, we have our notes from the meeting, we have the meeting minutes. Um, and that way there should not be a problem proving to the IRS that you actually had a business purpose. So now I want to go ahead and share with you how I search for rates uh, when I want to, you know, get a valid rate for rentals. So the very first one that I can go to is Peerspace. Uh, we can go to peerspace.com. This is simple Google search. And it says, what are you planning? So I'm going to be doing a meeting and I'm going to look in my zip code where the office is, which is 60605, where our South Loop office is. And once we search here, obviously I don't want 30 and $40 an hour because we're looking for a decent tax deduction. But here we started $95 an hour. There's one at $75 an hour. But not $275 would be excessive. That's just, you know, ridiculous. But here we have $175 an hour another $100 an hour, $175. So it looks like the going rate or the average rate would be anywhere from $90 to $110 per hour to have a meeting. So if we look here at this large conference room, we can see, well, what does that come with? First of all, you're going to have parking. So that's metered street parking. So I would even add, if I'm doing a hosting at my home, then I would add a parking fee of $20 to the rental rate. Um, it does include Wi-Fi. Some of these you'll see that there's no Wi-Fi included. So that will be an additional charge that you could 
add to your rental agreement. They also charge for coffee. If you want a full pot of coffee, it's $30. A half pot of coffee is $18. So if you're at your home and you're hosting your meeting, you're going to charge for coffee. You're going to charge for tea because this is a legitimate business expense. And this is what you would be paying others uh, if you were to utilize using someone else's space. Okay. Then we can even look at... Regis, Regis, I, well, I think it's Regis and maybe Regis, I'm not sure. Uh, but here we can book a meeting room. We don't have to actually book it, but we can see what their rates are. So I'm going to do a meeting room, let's say tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The number of people are three. I'm going to try close to my Homewood office and let's see if they have anything there. So no, <laughs> at Homewood, there's nothing there. They would want to send me all the way to Hyde Park. But here we see $92 an hour, $111, you know, 80, 92, 156. So again, I would take my average rate, maybe 90 to $111. This does not include coffee or parking or anything like that. Um, and you probably, I know with Regis, you would have to pay for amenities like coffee and tea. So by the time you do that, you're at about $150 an hour and you're doing that for four days. I'm sorry, for four hours, that's $600 in a day. You know, five hours, if we're looking at 150, let's do six hours, that's $900 times 12, that's $10,800. So it's a very nice tax deduction as long as you make sure to document. Now, one of the ways that you're going to document this, I would print out this information that came up and I would save it. Now, I don't believe in, um, I'm paperless, so I would print out and save it as a PDF file and save it to my computer. So if I am audited and IRS says, well, how did you come up with this rate of $100 per hour? I can say, well, here, you know, the going rate in the area and the zip code that I'm in, this was the going rate. The same thing if you wanted to search for a hotel, there's a hotel planner. So I pre-populated the information here. I did 60619 for an event starting tomorrow for three people for a half day rental for four hours. And the hotel that came back, Hyatt Place in High Park, that's $525 just for a half day rental. And I guarantee you that does not include parking, that doesn't include coffee, tea, refreshments, or anything like that. And with the hotels, that typically doesn't even include Wi Fi. And you have to pay them for an overhead uh, projector. Like you literally have to pay for everything. Now, you can also call the hotels and have them email you. I've done that before as well. But, you know, I'd like to be efficient. And so if I can find information online, then I would just go online. I would print this out as well. So now I have three individual sources that have said if I wanted to use their facility, I would be looking at between $100 to $150 per hour in order to host my meetings. And then I have already proven to the IRS that this was a legitimate business expense because I had meetings that businesses have, branding, budgets, decisions, industry news, etc. So I hope this video helps. If you need one-on-one -on -one information, then you can order our tax planning. Tax planning is $595 and we can walk over this uh, with you you know, I guess individually, but it's really not a hard concept to grasp. So I'm sure most of you won't need to do the tax planning or uh, pay for a consultation to have us, you know, kind of walk you through it. But if you do, that option is available. So thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it. That helps me bring you all more helpful content. Thank you.